Hello everyone, welcome to a new type of video series here at 45 Drives. If uh, two of us standing here didn't tip that off already. Um, anyway, new video series, but same old faces. Uh, we've got Mitch Hall here, our senior storage architect, and me, Brett Kelly, uh, head of R&D. And uh, well, what is this new series? Well, we've asked you guys what you wanted to see. You've liked our tech tip series, but you wanted some more in-depth videos. We wanted to, uh, some people wanted to see more architecture, uh, where we come with an idea and kind of dry up, dry up the best way to design a storage system around that. Or they wanted to see, no, get back in the lab, build stuff. I want to see you break things, build things. I want, I want to see it be real. So we figured we'd take that, that, slam them together, as you can tell by our whiteboard, yep. and take an idea, something real, something that Mitch has experienced from, from customers or ideas, something that people want built, that we go, we take the idea here, we talk it out, draw it on the whiteboard, then we go into our lab, grab all the gear we can, build it, and show it working. So without further ado, let's get started. Today, we're talking about designing a Ceph storage cluster for a Veeam repository. Okay, so we're architecting a Ceph storage cluster for Veeam, but before we get into the, the, the details, Mitch, what is Veeam and why do people like to use it? I great. hear that word a lot. Yeah, that's a great question. So, so Veeam specifically, in a lot of environments, you're gonna have virtual machines, you're gonna have desktops, you're gonna have a lot of things that you really want a second copy or a backup copy of, right? Um, so Veeam works great with things, hypervisors like VMware, uh, Hyper-V, et cetera, et cetera. So what Veeam is, is a great solution that gives you the ability to grab your VMs and back them up to another location. Okay, so uh, it makes sense then why they've just become the industry standard. They're yeah, really they, they really are. Use. I mean, there's lots of other ones out there, but like us for sure, like when we get customers coming in constantly, Veeam is the one that we hear way above all the others. Veeam does a good job of playing nicely with everything too, I find. They really do. Like. We're going to talk a few main ways that we'll use Ceph for this, but there's like way more that we're not even going to talk about. So you can have all these abilities and these different ways to connect to Veeam. Gotcha. And then so it sounds like most IT infrastructure, like you'll see Veeam kind of just end, end users. Uh, and when I say end users, I mean like in a, a company or an organization. Business, yeah. But what we're seeing a lot of now too is where businesses or companies are starting, yep. putting a bunch of servers in a data center, and they are being backups for companies. So companies don't necessarily have to do their own backup. Got, and they're using Veeam for that too, right? Yep, you got it. So Veeam has another whole side to its business. It's called Veeam Cloud Connect, where it essentially allows you to become your own backup business for customers that you kind of get. So you'll have this large Veeam infrastructure and customers from you know around the world or, or what have you are using you as their backup service. now. That's another big reason why Ceph would be amazing yeah, for that. Yeah, because that data is going to get very, big. very large and exactly. elastic. That's the yes, other big. Yes. It's going to change demand. Maybe customers leave, and you got to reclaim Snip stuff. It out. So, exactly. so not only is like Ceph awesome here because it can do object block and friggin' everything, <laughs> but uh, it's elastic in its nature, and it can grow really big. Exactly. The scaling portion is so simple to okay. grow and, and shrink. Well, let's talk about that then. Let's pretend we're one of those companies. Yeah, yeah. Let's use so, that case for sure. I'll put my role play hat on. <laughs> um, I am someone who's done the math out and I've decided that I'm going to need one petabyte of data to start. I've done some, talked to some customers, prospective customers, they're into it. I'm going to need one petabyte of data. I've already got my Veeam infrastructure set up, okay. so don't worry about that. Yep. Um, but I need a, Ceph, a cluster that does one petabyte. And remember, I, I do know that Ceph does object and file and block. So how the heck are we going to get Ceph to work with Veeam? Great question. So before we even design how Ceph should work, how are we going to connect the two together? Can you tell me more about that? Absolutely. You I'll steal that marker for All me. Right. All right. So the two main ways, well, yeah. So the two main ways Veeam is going to use storage is going to be block and object. So block is going to be the performance tier, what you'd call. And then object, you can kind of see that as the capacity tier where it's no longer in the window where you may need to restore that backup very quickly. So let's just focus on the actual block side of it for now. And so with Ceph, you have two main ways to do block storage. Yeah, so Ceph RBD, right? So That's Ceph we're RBD, doing. exactly. We're not using file system at all. Here. We're not using Ceph We're just FS. talking Ceph RBD. You got it, okay, Ceph RBD. Cool. So 
One cool thing that Veeam has is something called Fast Clone. And so let's talk about that. One way you can do that is with the XFS file system. So you can take your Cephire BD, you can put it on a Linux box, right? So you've got your Linux box here and you've got your Veeam server up here. So you can make yourself a very, very large RBD, let's say 256 terabytes, whatever you wanna do, and you put it on this machine. And then, so from there, you have your XFS file system and you're gonna take advantage of that fast clone. And where fast clone is really, really cool is, with Veeam, you're gonna do incremental backups, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't wanna, the, the name of the game is to not hit your production storage as much as possible. And when you say incremental backup, it's like, the old dumb way of doing a backup is just send the whole thing up again. Exactly. Incrementally, like we're only sending the changes. Only things that Simple. have changed. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, makes, makes so sense. you can imagine if you had to do the whole thing every time, your Gosh. production storage is getting hit really hard and it's just a lot of data to yeah, transfer. And we're a company out in a data center, so someone's paying for all someone's this network traffic. Someone's paying for all so that traffic. we want to reduce network traffic too. You got it. Gotcha. So that was kind of a stupid thing to draw. So let me, let me <laughs> just show That was a great little trapezoid yeah. you so do. Let's just show this. Oh, geez. <laughs> So let's call these <laughs> our incremental backups. So you have a full back here where you do, let's say at the start of the week. So that's a full backup. That's everything on that VM. Then what you're gonna have is incremental. So the so next- So these are right, almost like states of the VM you're you showing got it. here. These so are it's states like state of VM. one, here's like state two after some You've time. got it. Okay, so this cool. is day two, this is day one. Gotcha. Okay, so let's see day two. This block has changed, this block has changed, this block has changed. So when the, the Veeam goes to actually back up, all it has to send and, and write to this uh, repository is these blocks that have changed. Oh, so like a gigabyte out of the 200 exactly. terabytes. Of, exactly, exactly. Okay, Especially awesome. like yeah. VMs that are just running infrastructure. A lot of times not much changes mm -hmm. uh, from day to day, right? Yep. So okay, so normal people will do a seven day window. So let's just pretend we've got seven of these incrementals. Okay, on this one, this block changed, this one and this one. Let's keep going. I really do love the shape of your, your, your states. <laughs> they they but keep changing every, the sorry, size I'll let changed. you keep going. All right, so let's say we get now to day seven. Well, the problem is if you needed to restore this uh, right now, if you have just the incremental and you don't have a full right here, you, what you have to do is you have to take these and you have to squeeze them together. So that's a lot of computation and it's a lot of building new storage array to get or, or storage to actually get your full back. So you can actually restore from a full backup with all these incremental updates. So that takes time and it takes IO. So what we can do is we can use fast clone that every seventh day, rather than having to build these together into an actual full real backup, we can use XFS and the reflink module to just reference all these blocks. So we can create this one, but it's not real. It's called a synthetic full backup. So we're just pointing to these blocks that changed. Oh yeah, okay, right? that makes complete sense. Yeah. yeah, and so this full, this syn and synthetic full, it take, doesn't take up any new space. And when you do, or if you do have to restore it, it's instant. So that's one way, um, and it's really, really cool. And it's the way we did it for a long time, but yeah, because it's rock solid and supported, right? Exactly. Okay, so um, yeah, keep going. Then. Okay, so I was gonna say, but what you can imagine is if you've got that RBD mounted on one machine, if that machine goes down, well, your Veeam repository is down until you get that back up, or you move the RBD somewhere else. Your data is not lost because it's obviously backed by a highly available Ceph cluster. Gotcha. So it's like this, the data is highly available, but in that scenario, we still have to use a gateway to kind of act as a proxy to get into Veeam. You've so got that's it. gotta be redundant too. You've got it. Okay. So the other way, and the way that we push very heavily these days is using the native Windows driver for Ceph, Aha, yes. which is really awesome. So it's been around probably two years, but we've been using it in kind of production scenarios for a little less, probably one year maybe. Yeah. So we've got it in use on a lot of customers and they love it and we love it. And so thank what you, you CloudBase. Thank you CloudBase, thank you uh, OpenSUSE. Yeah. Uh, Everyone who contributed, <laughs> we love the open yes, source world. Absolutely. And so what that essentially does is that cuts out this gateway server. And so down here you have your Ceph cluster, let's say. You build your RBD on this Ceph cluster. You map that directly into your Windows box uh, with the RBD map. So it doesn't use iSCSI. It's actually using native Ceph protocol. And what that means is the Veeam server talks to all nodes in the Ceph cluster at the same time. Oh, wow. There's no gateway. Okay, so performance gains. Performance gains. And like no- High availability. High availability is just you native, it. it's there. Yeah, <laughs> this server goes down, well you still have however many other servers to talk to for your Veeam cluster. Okay, but your Veeam what, server. Uh, 
I thought like fast clone works because of XFS. You got it. We're not going to use XFS anymore. No, we're not. But what we're going to use is REFS, ah. which also has fast. So Windows does. All right. Well, there so we go. So you still Veeam, get the same thing. Veeam plays nice with everyone. Veeam does play nice with everyone. Pretty much everything. Yeah. So those are the two ways, and that's the way that we would recommend. So I think probably for this architecture, that's what we should use. Okay. Okay. That was a lot of good information. Do you mind if I sum it up? Because absolutely. I'm gonna steal that back. So, like. Option A that we still works, we support yep. and everything like that, but is put a gateway. Geez, I'm not good at drawing <laughs> blocks either. I was making fun of them, yeah. but it's that. We got, got a Seth cluster. cluster. Yep. We mount RBD into here. You got it. This is a Linux box. We throw XFS on top of that. You got it. And then the Veeam server sitting up here somewhere and we connect in that way as a storage repository. You got it, using Veeam's own agent that does that. Okay, you got some high availability issues, we can do it, but long story short is we have to have another piece of hardware here acting as the gateway. You got it, okay. and it's not strictly high available at that point. Yeah, so it's, it's a little extra complexity. Yep. Works just fine, Veeam plays with the Linux agent, blah, blah, blah. Because, yeah, what's it called, the Veeam Linux agent or something, yeah. that's how it gets It's over SSH yeah, and with it's with some extra SSH, ports. Yeah, it's for cool. Yeah. But then again, there's a little bit of a bottleneck here because all data has to go through here. Yeah. This communicates concurrently with the Ceph cluster, but okay, you got gotcha. It. You got it. And then what, what we can do now instead is just put Veeam, um, and then we'll, we'll mount RBD natively in here, again, yep. thanks yep. to the native Windows drivers, and then that concurrently back and forth. Oh, that was the wrong direction, but you get my point. <laughs> Talks to the Ceph cluster. Into the Ceph cluster. So now we've removed all bottlenecks here. We are natively HA with no extra complexity. Yep. Oh yeah, that's the way we're gonna go. That's the way. Okay. Well, with that out of the way, let's uh, let's erase this board and uh, design this part of the Ceph cluster. Exactly. Move on to the next step, which is designing that. Sick. So uh, bear with me as I erase this. It'll hold her still. <laughs> I asked for a better whiteboard, but this is all I got. <laughs> Maybe if these videos catch on, they'll buy us something nicer. Yeah. Come on, guys, leave a like. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I got out this. So uh, let's get started. What kind of chassis are we working on here? Well, before we decide what chassis we want, I think we need to know what is it actually, what's the network look like, and uh, how much throughput are you trying to push through? Yes, this I kind of forgot that part. Eh? A good uh, clustered file <laughs> system, or I guess not file system, clustered storage system is only as good as its network. That's right. Okay, so uh, who are we being? We're being a company who's backing up everyone's stuff in a data center. So. I have 10 gigabit internet into the data center I'm living in. Okay. I have 10 gig wired to my front end, and I know Ceph needs a back end network for replication, yep. and I've got 40 gig for that. Oh, Can perfect. we work with that? That's exactly okay. what I would have recommended. Okay, perfect. So yeah, so you're gonna spec for expecting that that front end 10 gigabit internet connection is gonna be saturated at least sometimes, right? Yep. Okay. So that's good. So okay. So yeah, I, I I just want the best I can get. Yeah, this is absolutely. this is all I can afford to pay for right now. <laughs> so it's just like I don't know, make it work. Yes. I've got some money. I want this to last. I want to be able to expand this. So yep. quote me like, I, I want to try to fill the pipe as fast as much as possible. Yeah, I'm, I'm not nickel and diamond here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you've got clients, as they come on, you're probably going to get closer and closer to filling that. So you want to make sure your storage system isn't going to proverbially crap the bed when you uh, get up to that 10 gigabits time. So, okay, so with that in mind, I think a, a great way to go with one petabyte storage uh, for Ceph is our S45 nodes using hybrid 16s. Oh, okay. So if you look at probably four of those would be able to fit that plus quite a bit of extra. What, uh, what um, electronic package are we using? So definitely I'd, I'd spec this at the turbo spec uh, level of our servers. Okay, so our, our big gold uh, 26 core. Yep, you got it. Uh, Intel CPU and like 256 gigs of RAM. Yeah, at least, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so our turbo model. If anyone's interested, go to the 45drives.com, check out the tur turbo model. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's chassis, that's, that's network. Um, oh, wait, why hybrid 16? Well, hybrid 16, yeah, because you're thinking we need one petabyte of block storage on our HDDs. Yeah, I was just thinking just hard drives. Right. So in Ceph, um, we pretty much at this point recommend across the board that we use SSDs for Rocks DB and Wall on our OSDs. Ah, uh, okay. So that's like a write ahead log, and a Rocks DB is a database that essentially holds metadata about where those objects are on the on the OSD and other type of OMAP data. Um, so if you can move that off of the spinning drive and move it on an SSD, you're going to definitely see decreased latency across the board okay, and good. increased uh, more more. Uh, I guess what would be the word? 
IOPS that consistent. don't more consistent IOPS. Yeah, so without those and big latency From what I understand hits. about it, it's kind of like when you do have latency hits and stuff like that with just pure spinners, like. An OSD will probably go about 200 megabytes a second. Remember yep. an OSD, uh, right? Isn't and then it? as with those latency spikes, you'll see yeah, exactly. and little drops like that. And then, so you're peaking at 200, but your effective throughput will look somewhere down there. You got it. Your but, aggregate is actually but, much lower. But what you're saying with journals is those, those valleys aren't nearly as bad. And we see more of a good kind of yes. cleaner... Through you've, line. you've got so it. that's what the journals are doing for us here yep it'll really help with bursty stuff to avoid these from being these very much so okay okay that's cool so that's definitely something we're going to recommend for for this type of solution right a lot of these workloads like just writing in a backup is not going to be that io intensive it's very sequential yeah yeah i got a question about that a backup like a backup is just a big of data right like is is it io intensive not in the strictest sense, not the actual backup part, but there definitely is workloads within the backup structure that are going to be I.O. Oh, intensive. true, because you were talking about uh, the whole synthetic backup thing. You got it. Okay, that's great. We don't have to transfer as much data, but it's got to do some thinking and it reading. Definitely so it, I bet. So there is a high amount of like small read I.O. Yep. as it calculates everything. And very random sometimes as well, yeah. right? It's not going to be sequential like you'd expect a normal backup okay. to be. So that's why we want the, the journals. Absolutely. Because it's going to smooth that out and that kind of like calculation of, of what's changed All and stuff just goes quick. Yep, you got Sick. it. Okay, I understand. All right, approved. I like the H16. Good. So what do we said? Four of these? Yeah, four of those for sure. Okay, let me draw them. I love drawing blocks. <laughs> these are better than the first ones we did. Yep. If only slightly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So these are Stornator chassis. You we're going to put hard drives in all of them. We're going to put some SSDs in all of them. Yep. Um, uh, I guess what's next? Um, well, we can pick size and all that, but I do know that depends on the type of like replication or replication is the wrong word. Type of redundancy. Data. Redundancy. Profiles. Thank you. Yeah. Redund redundancy profile. So I know Ceph does erasure code. Yep. I know Ceph does replication. You got it. Replication's easy. It's the number of, n number of copies that yep. you choose. Absolutely. Uh, defaults to three. Um, but I think I want erasure code here because I'm going to grow this thing and I want the best. Um, the best efficiency, Yeah, because right? erasure code is pretty much RAID, right? Yeah, it's like RAID for servers is a good way to, I mean, under the hood, it's very different, but it's a great way to, an analogy to explain it to people is RAID for servers. Yeah, so like if I was understood like, this is an object. We use squares and rectangles for everything here, <laughs> but this is an object. You got so it. if I was an erasure code and I would have to break it into some data chunks yep. and then like a parity chunk. You've got it. Yeah, so, so we, it's, it's RAID. So, so if that's, that's a four meg object, essentially what, uh, and what you've built here is a two plus one, what that would essentially yeah, okay. do is that would give you a two meg chunk, a two meg chunk, and another two mag parity. Ah. So you end up with 66% efficiency. Makes sense because if I was replicating, I would have a four meg, a four meg, and a four meg. You got so it. we have to, we so get to write less yep. and we get to store less. Yes, so that is the big benefit of that. But then of course there is no free lunch in this world, right? So where you will see some deficiencies in erasure coding is let's say that object gets written to these servers, but you have to edit that file or you have to edit that data. Well, it has to pull it back together bring those chunks together, make the edit, and then put them back. So that's where latency can be a little higher on erasure okay. coding. So good thing we're using journal Exactly, theory. exactly. Okay, I really get the journal thing. And not only that, a lot of our writes here are gonna be write once, read many. Uh, there's not a whole lot of editing after it's been written because we're using one. that reflink module. Yeah, and that wouldn't be a very good backup if you changed your backup. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, okay, erasure code, we've decided on that, yep. but you just said the magic word. This is a two plus one. Yeah. I know a two plus one is not the best idea. It's best to go a little more redundant than that because we really can only withstand one failure. Yep. So what uh, what profile are we talking about then? So I think the logical best profile yeah, for this one. Yeah, because we're doing one, four. We're doing exactly, four, four nodes would be a four plus two erasure code. Why is that? Well, it's the, the next best erasure code for what we can do. We, we like to keep it at powers of two for sure. But on the what, on the parity? On, on both actually, okay, yeah, okay. on both, on the parity as well as the data. So what we see here, for anyone that actually might know erasure coding, you may be looking at this and saying, well, a four plus two would probably need six servers. Why? 
because you, what we're doing here is we're breaking it up into six chunks, and typically with our oh, failure yes. domain at the host level, you're going to put one chunk on each host. But we can play with that failure domain, right? We definitely can, yes. and that's something that we, we do regularly. So Ceph is great for its granularity and how much you can actually play with it and, and make it to your own image, what you want. So what we can tell Ceph to do with that four plus two erasure code, rather than when it breaks that up into, okay, I guess we could go like, yeah, yeah you, you make a new one. Yeah. Sorry, I feel like drawing today, Mitch. Yeah, absolutely. Let, let make, a, go. make a new one with six chunks there. One, two, three, four, Oh, I'm uh, sorry, everyone. Six. There we go. All right. So with our failure domain at the host level, normally, like we said, you'd go one to each, and you'd be able to lose two servers. Um, but yeah, we're never going to be able to do this with the, just the, with the vanilla kind of failure domain, yep. because we'll only ever be able to write four unique chunks. Exactly. Okay. So what we can do is we can use a custom crush map within Ceph to let Ceph know when you go to start breaking these chunks up, don't just put one on a host. Put the first two on that host, then when you pick a new host, put another two on two different OSDs. Sorry, this would go yep, here. That was, you got a, that, it. Was bad. that was bad. No problem. Um, and then the last two would go to one of the other two uh, hosts. And it, it picks it randomly. It picks it randomly, yeah. exactly. Each placement group will so pick randomly. So we could do a four plus two with his minimum is three. Minimum of three, you got it. Okay. And the reason why we don't and why we recommend go that extra mile is because if you lost a server and you only had three, well, you're now degraded completely no matter if that stays down forever. Because Ceph is the magic storage organism that <laughs> yes, heals itself. Exactly. Everyone thinks of traditional RAID yep. as safe, yep. but when you lose the drive in that RAID, it does not rebuild itself. It you doesn't. must replace it, and then it'll rebuild itself. Exactly. Ceph is intelligent, and if you give it enough room, and if we killed this one, yep. it would just start rebuilding its data over in one of the other ones because yep. it still satisfies that rule we gave it. You got it. Cool, man. Okay. Okay. So I think, yeah, I think we're settled on that for sure for this, uh, for this use case, a so four plus two um, with now, that custom crush map. What about growing though? Like, uh, great question. Yeah, because like say now I've got a bunch of servers, because remember if we're going to get elastic, elastic we're going to grow, yep. we're going to have a big successful backup business. Yep. And now I have like 12 servers. Right. Do I still have to do this custom crush map? That's, that's a great question. That's where this is really, really cool. So while we can never actually change the erasure code itself once it's built. So yeah, actually, like the number of chunks. Yeah, we've exactly. Chosen. Yeah. I mean, you could always build a new erasure code profile, but then you can data. Yeah, exactly. But what we can do, and it's really cool, is you can change your failure domain in an already created pool with an already created erasure code profile, even with a lot of data on it. So if you've got okay, six so let me redraw this then. So yeah. we're in expansion mode. So yeah, exactly. Let's say you added at least two more servers to One, this cluster. Two, three, four. This is hard. Five, <laughs> six. There we go. Okay, so now we're at six. Now we have six nodes. So now what we can do is tell Ceph, okay, we want to change your failure domain on this pool. Now put one chunk on each host. And obviously, it's going to shuffle a lot of data around. But we got a good back end. You got a good back end, and client traffic still resumes as normal. Nothing, nothing from the client side is really out of the ordinary here. It's transparent to the users. Very, very much so. Yeah. Okay, so with this, we're setting ourselves up for future growth. Yep. But allowing to start at a, a much lower entry point. Exactly. Which yep. is great for us as a business because I spent all my money on my ten gig <laughs> pipe in. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Cool, man. So that's it. We're going to do four. Oh, yeah. Size of drives. Size of drives. So that, that's, that's kind, kind of an easy, easy one. Yeah. yeah. I think the best uh, size for a drive in a, in a Ceph cluster this large is 16 terabytes is a great place to start. Um, Here. I'm crunching that number. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Right. So let's do it. it would so we've be, got hybrid 45 or 45 hybrid 16. So what's that give us? 38 HDD slots yeah, per node? Times four. So that's 152 slots. Okay. Times 16. 16. So that's 2.4 petabytes raw. Okay, 2.4 petabytes raw. And we raw. multiply that by... So our, our, our 4 plus six. 2 erasure code gives us 66% storage efficiency. Okay, cool. So yeah, so 1.6 petabytes. So that's a little north of what we shot for, yep. but that's actually good. That's very good. Because yep. we talked about the self-healing part of Ceph. Yep. And if you size your Ceph cluster just so it's just the right amount, Yep. well, it's not going to be able to heal itself, is it? Exactly. If that, if that server goes down, it ends up being a long-term failure. Uh, you don't have anywhere to move that, that data that you've got to heal. So, so we're back down to the kind of RAID, add more storage. To exactly. Fix exactly. Okay. So we're shooting for one petabyte, but it's nice 
to have a little extra so we could handle some failures. And you stuff got like it. That. A little overgrowth uh, and, for and, sure. And we're going to grow, right? We're yeah. going to grow and, and the price is nice on it. So what's an extra 600 terabytes? Exactly. And even if you don't fill those up right away, well, at least then oh, at that yeah, point. We wouldn't have to populate the servers all the way. Exactly. So you don't populate them all the way. Then when you do want to grow, well, it's not, you don't have to go and grab another server right away. You can just add some drive to oh, each that's node. Convenient. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's cool now. And then sizing the SSDs, that's, that's easy. That's, that's another simple one, yeah. So we, we'll, for a 16 terabyte drive, what we like to do is a ratio of three to one. So you can go to four to one as well. But three to one. Three to one's a nice three. one. So three HDDs for one SSD. Uh, okay, so we're gonna put the journal, because that's what we're doing, journaling. Geez, yep. I'm running out of space here, guys. <laughs> Join me up here. Yep. So we've got an OSD and we'd have an SSD. Yep. And then, but we're actually just going to take a little partition of an SSD and give it to that OSD. You got it. So we'll have like three partitions on each SSD. And then each OSD will get one. And each OSD will get okay. one partition. That makes sense to me. Yep. Why, uh, what's with the ratio? Obviously I can't do one to one because that's just unfeasible. I don't have enough slots. Why yeah. can't I just do all my OSDs on like two really big SSDs? Right. So the, the reason why we're putting these on SSDs in the first place is to get that random I.O. performance benefit that an SSD has that a HDD doesn't. So essentially what happens is if you put too many on one SSD, you're going to just choke that SSD and any benefit you got in the first place. Oh, okay. So you don't want to overload it. Gotcha. Yeah. And also spacing as well, right? We want to make sure we have a few hundred gigabytes and, uh, of space per. And I guess if we have a bunch of OSDs on one SSD too, if, oh, yeah. if that SSD dies, That's another is the one. OSD dead? Yeah, exactly. So let's say you did put one SSD on all those, then your failure domain gets a little complicated. You lose that SSD, that whole node, every uh, OSD is gone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that three to one is a nice good ratio. You're not going too high. It's not too low. It's not one to one, right? Um, and, and you still get the great performance benefit. Yeah, okay, so in that case, if we lose an SSD, we could lose three OSDs. Three OSDs. If we lose three OSDs and those OSDs have two chunks because we're putting it here, oh, we're down to the four, which, okay, yeah, like it's not happy about that, We've but we've got a four plus two, we can handle that. Exactly, you can handle that failure. Okay. And that's a big reason why we do the four plus two with that custom failure domain, because you can imagine, like we talked about, with that uh, two plus one, um, if you've got three OSDs, one on each host, they're part of the same placement group, if one OSD goes down, that's part of this placement group, and then it's self-healing, right? Let's say an OSD here also goes down at that, within the next like few hours even while that's repairing. You now have lost potentially two chunks out of that placement group. Now you could have data loss. So that's really bad, which a four plus two, you can withstand two at the same time from the same placement group across hosts, and you still have your four data chunks. Okay, so that makes sense to me. Uh, you say placement group. Placement group is just kind of like an internal set thing for keeping objects organized. You right? got it, exactly. Yeah, Rather so like the end users, like, comms don't really need to care about placement no, group. No, right? exactly. Clients don't. It's essentially. Um, it, it's so, so Seth doesn't. Sorry, I cut you off. No, no, go ahead. Just confirm or deny if I'm right here. Um, a placement group, it would be insane to track billions of objects. <laughs> That's exactly So I right. kind of need to organize them into like. Groups, cubby groups holes, whatever like you that. want to call them. Yeah. So exactly. it's just like from an end user, just think of it as objects or whatever. But internally with Seth, they kind of like they group those cubby together. Holes. I, like that. <laughs> I stole that from you, actually. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So cubby holes, suitcases, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's just a way so Seth. Some tennis balls. But exactly from that nice. Uh, I forget who it was that did the. It was, it's the best description of what a placement, of what a placement group, group is. Group is yeah. It's so good that like I'm afraid to take it because it's such a good analogy. Maybe we'll link anyway, it down we'll, below we'll if we find it. it. We yeah. should, yeah. It's a good but yeah, essentially, yeah. rather than Ceph having to track every single object on a you know per object basis with millions of objects, it just tracks the placement groups instead. So Okay, cool. Long story short, we don't have to worry about placement no, groups. No, not if as a client interested at all. interested in it, we'll find that video, we'll link it and they can Definitely. check it Definitely, yeah, cool. absolutely. Okay, we know HCDs, we know the SSD size. Yep. Um, because size doesn't matter so much. It's more about having enough individual SSDs for the OSDs. You got it. Um, also having enough HDDs to serve at least 10 gigabit of throughput at the worst case scenario when all clients are trying to back up, yes, so which we do least, very Yeah, much. at least 15, but that's not enough to get a yeah. terabyte, so we're doing 38. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So we got four servers. Yep. Uh, we got our network figured out. We're going to do journals. Yep. Well, I, think, it looks I think it's time to build this thing. That sounds good to me. Let's do it. Okay, so we're going to go in the lab. We're going to build this cluster. We're going to hook it in Naveem, and we're going to show you how it all works. So uh, I think we're done in this room. Yeah. 
Let's go build a cluster. Let's go build a cluster. All right, let's get in here. Let's build the cluster. Yes. Oh, look, someone cleaned it up for us. That's nice. <laughs> All right, so we're back in the lab. You guys have seen this place before. Um, we're coming from the, uh, the video production room. Uh, it was a long walk, as you can tell. We've Change clothes, beards grown out a little bit, yep. but, but we're here. Couple week walk. Couple week walk, yeah. Walk. Um, yeah, so here's the fun kind of unscripted part of the video where we just, we're gonna take what we did in there, we're gonna build it here. We kind of did some pre, pre prep work for you. Yep. Well, it wasn't us, right? Because we came right from the room. So yeah, some magical definitely. elves yeah. or something set it up for us. <laughs> but uh, I mean, without further ado, let's build our Ceph cluster and then hook it into Veeam. So, yep. Mitch, why don't you tell them uh, what we have on the board here? Sure, because it's a little bit different from what we talked about, um, but not a whole lot, right? Yeah. So uh, Close enough for what we could find yeah. in the lab, right? So for strange rectangle number one, we've got, oh, yes, yes, yeah, yes, we've our, got our server here. So we got three, you can see, we talked about having four servers, which, you know, ideally, but, you know, we had three servers available. It was easiest for us. Um, nothing changes, though. We can still do the erasure code profile with the three servers. Yeah, we just don't we're going to do... The, the four plus two, we're gonna put two chunks on each server. Exactly, you got yeah, it. Yeah, so, gotcha. So we're still good there. Um, we got our mountain of disks over here. Chris, yes. you wanna take a look? This uh, is uh, our version of Linus's uh, tower of disks. It's not quite a petabyte. No, it's a not mix quite a and match of drives everywhere from 12 <laughs> terabytes to 20 terabytes. But. So we'll, uh, we'll know the final number when we put, our, put it all together. Yep. But that's the kind of fun secret surprise. We'll <laughs> see what the total, uh, total capacity is once we get it up. Yep. And then finally, we do actually do have our, our 40 gig back end and we have our 10 gig front end network. And finally, we got our Veeam server. So we've got everything we need. Now we just got to build it. We just got to build it. So let's, uh, let's put the drives in, yep. put the servers up. We'll Fair. hop into Houston, we'll build it through Ceph Deploy. Yep. And when Ceph Deploy is done, we'll just make sure that the RBD pool is looking nice. Yes. And uh, we'll give you the, the, the wheel and you can hook her into Veeam. Sounds good. All right, let's all get right. started. Let's do it. Um, okay, let's get all these drives in here. Yeah, don't worry about order. Oh yeah, there's SSDs. Why are we doing oh, the yeah, SSDs? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So we did talk about this in the, uh, in the whiteboard as well. So we're gonna have, in this instance, six SSDs per node, which are gonna act as the journal devices or the RocksDB wall for each of our OSDs. So we're gonna do a four to one ratio here. Um, four HDDs for each one SSD. Um, yeah, so let's get going. Awesome, thank you. Um, Chris, if, uh, get as much of this as you want. Um, yeah, so just grab from the top yeah. and start loading in. Yep. So you know what, I'm going to uh, put one of these here. There you go. Grab one of these and I'm gonna move down to the end. Sick. This is fun. The best part of it too is they've all been ripped out of their plastic casing already. Yeah, makes it uh, much easier to snag them all. And one of the in. nicest parts of our servers, um, for anyone who's loaded uh, a very dense storage server before and you use drive caddies, drive caddies are nice, but uh, what's this? You do, we're gonna do what? Just about 64 drives we're gonna plug in here. In no, a that's couple bad minutes. math, 19. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do 57 drives. So you put four screws in each one of that, would be, that'd be the whole video. Yeah, yeah, it would take quite a while to do that. So the point that I'm making is toolless top loaded servers are great, That's especially the way when go. they're very dense. Absolutely. All right. So I'm putting a bunch of 16 terabytes in here. Um, I'm just going all over the map yeah, here. Yeah, you're just winging it. Yep, um, all over the place. Typically when you're building a Ceph cluster, Ceph doesn't care about the drive sizes. Uh, we can use a mix of 10s all the way up to 20s. Now, the kind of details of how you should arrange your crush map to deal with that, Ceph will do its best. But what we like to say here is try to keep, you can be as random as you want, but try to be as uniform across all the servers as possible. Yep. Now, um, because we're in the lab and we're having fun, we're throwing caution to the wind and we're not doing that. But uh, typically, if you are gonna use mixed drive size in Ceph, that's fine. Just um, try to keep your servers as like uniform as possible. So like five sixteens in each of them. And I don't have to explain myself. You know what I mean. Try to keep them uniform. And just a little more on that too. Like things like ZFS. ZFS is awesome. You can use mixed drive sizes in ZFS, but you can't really because it'll just pick the smallest drive you gave it 
partition every disc to be that size and it'll just appear like that. Seth's really cool as in it, re it will try to use all of it. One thing to keep in mind, because I'm saying if you don't keep them uh, uniform and say we had one really denser than the rest of them, eventually it's gonna fill up kind of faster than the other, or sorry, the other ones will fill up faster. And then once you hit the kind of like too, fill, too full part, you won't be able to honor your crush rule anymore. Cause say like, say this server got too full and um, all the other ones had more room left. You'd be like, well, yeah, I've still got capacity, but you wouldn't really because Ceph couldn't honor its rule of writing two copies to each server. So again, a lot of words just to say, keep them as uniform as possible. Yeah, and the, the one other thing to keep in mind as well is Ceph will assign placement groups and the amount of placement groups based on how large that drive is. It gives it a crush weight. Oh, and yeah. so yeah. you can imagine if you've got one 20 terabyte drive mixed in with you know, 15, 16 terabyte drives, that one 20 terabyte drive may get way more placement groups and as a result might end up getting written to much more often. And if that happens, obviously your performance is going to suffer. So as long as you have them uniform across all and you don't go very, very full on your cluster, which we never recommend anyway, we don't recommend going above 80% usage in a cluster, you're gonna be pretty great. Pretty great. Pretty great. All right. So as uh, you guys might know, if anyone's familiar, I got my Hot Ones t-shirt on. So we've uh, entered the portion <laughs> of the uh, show where we do a deep dive on the guest Instagram account. And, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Don't sue us, Complex. We're sorry, Sean Evans. We love you. <laughs> Come on, baby. There we go. Oh, yeah. You just got to give it the right touch. Just got to give it the finesse. Yeah, you know, just a little just gotta smooth, tap it in. little... <laughs> Are we just gonna fill this, for, oh, this thing with good. references now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think we're we're good. You want to put that last one in? There we go. There we go. The old Seagate chest. Like I gotta say, the new Seagate drives are much nicer. Yeah. These ones, uh, they're hard to get a grip on. I find. Like so the big solid ones. We just put how many drives was that? Fifty. Uh, I believe it was yeah. nineteen in each. That's, we did that in like what, less no, than no, five no, minutes? No, 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 that was a lie. There's 24 in each, because we yeah. lost six slots. So 24 yep. in each. I was trying to do the math earlier. Really. <laughs> Geometry Six? and mental math, not <laughs> our strong suit, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> suit, well, speaking words, apparently not right. bad either. Well, we should probably turn them on, right? Let's do it. Let's get these okay, going. So we got one of those on already. Yep. Let's, uh... Actually, yeah, so one of these servers were, was on while we did this, hot swap. Gotta love it. Cool. So you can add the drives while the server's still running. This one won't turn on. Oh, it's the... Huh. Yeah, turn the power on. Yeah, you probably gotta do that. There you Thank go. Thank you. So, uh, so we don't have stagger spin up on these ones, so I'm just gonna give it about five seconds before I turn the other server on. Yeah. <laughs> Squeak. Is it really 45 drive video if I don't make some weird sound effect? <laughs> Uh, look, now I'm, I'm getting nervous. I'm going to the computer. We don't need to be here yet. <laughs> uh, so we'll let those two boot up. Let's go into Houston on, uh, on one of them there. True. The one that was already up, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I believe fat fingers there. 192, 168, 122. Oh, uh, we got to plug our back end. Yeah, too. we need our back end network. Yeah, Chris, might as well check this part out. This is kind of cool. Just going to see some lights turn on. So this is a nice little uh, Arista. Well, it's not little, but it's a nice 40 gig switch that was graciously donated to us by, I don't know where Steve McNeil found it, but he found it. <laughs> if anyone knew him, he works in our sales uh, sales group. He uh, man knows how to acquire things. So we got our lights underneath. Yeah, we got one more popping on there. Come on. I'm impatient, that'll turn on. There it goes. So we officially got our back end network yeah. up and running. So let's log into our Houston Command Center. Seth Rocky Uno. Okay, so I will uh, kind of do the hand wavy. This, uh, this is one of my dev clusters. So if you see some weird stuff in Houston and stuff like that, we're just playing around. And if something goes wrong, well, you know, it's the classic, eh, it's the dev machine. Okay, terminal. Let me just we make- We get us a Ceph deploy. Yeah. Jeez, cockpit Ceph deploy. Yep. Um, the developer who makes this would be very mad at me 
but I still love the command line more than anything else. You mean the dev that's right behind you? Yeah, the, the guy that gave me the, the, the look <laughs> that kind of gave me pause there. Oh, well, here it comes. We love you, Mark. <laughs> no problem. See, and that's it, right? We've got a live lab here. We've got everything happening. Mark's printing. We're having fun. Uh, okay, so that's Ceph deploy there. I wonder if those other servers are Yeah, let's are see if yet. we can ping her. Or, or, yeah, let's even try to get into them. 90, 90. Not quite, quite yet, yet, it seems. Oh, yeah, no, there it went. There we go. 90, 90. I don't know why I'm using <laughs> that accent. <laughs> the seeds in the dip. You know that Parks and Rec when they try to get Oscar? You ever watch Parks and Rec? Okay. You know when they try to get Oscar to... Uh, did they do the murder mystery episode? Uh, uh, I don't think I remember. Uh, I'll, I'll show you when we're done here. <laughs> All right. What's the new module thing I'm seeing on, on Rocky well, One? I, anyway? And that's what I mean. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got, we got a new, I saw that new, on there. new member on the team not long ago, so I was just kind of giving them the kind of the uh, uh, Cole's okay. notes of how to, get a, how, to, how to get a new module going. Gotcha. So, new module. I mean, yeah, some broken saw. HTML. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it was a dev box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, All right, so let's refresh this bad boy. Okay, so that's done. Let me go system restart cockpit dot socket. We'll reconnect. I don't know why it's doing that to me all of a sudden. There we go. We now have Ceph deploy. Okay, so before that, let's make sure all your discs picked up. Yep. Because again, we did just grab it random ones from the lab. True Some of them might enough be dead. on that we'll one. Check her out. Yep. We should do that on all three of them, I guess. Yeah. So that'll load up. Yep. Oh, that's a good sign. Oh, that's a good sign. Okay, so this is the beautiful part of what Mark did here, too. So we've got one 24 spinning drives. Yep. And it's smart enough to know the difference of which type of drives in there, too. It actually knows. Mark's yeah. put, Mark put a lot of time in putting those uh Yeah, I love together. that. You get to see yeah. it really quickly. And then these, glance. which look a little funny, are SSDs as if they were installed in, like, an Caddies. SSD caddy. Yeah, uh, really we had cool. some of them 3D printed around. Anyway, whatever. Because um, remember, we plugged six in, so... Everyone's in uh, in the first server there. Looks Second like server too. Yeah, everything looks good there, and looks good on this last one too. So all our drives are present. They all look pretty. Thanks awesome. again, Mark. <laughs> um, okay. Awesome. So let's hop back to one. Set deploy. All right. Okay. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna remove Seth. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna go backwards a little bit here. I'm gonna remove this again. I'm okay. going to remove my Ansible, because remember what I was saying? I was kind of like, I, I don't work from the package. I was working from a Git repo because I would do dev stuff on yep. here. So I'm going to make sure that that directory is gone and that we Before get like we, a clean yeah. one. Yeah. Yep. So let's, yeah. Yeah. So let me back out one. I'm going to move yep. Ceph Ansible to Ceph Just Ansible backup. Backup. <laughs> I've done already that have a, couple it a couple times. times. <laughs> yes. Um, yep. Uh, so let's just do uh, video backup because yep. we're on camera here. Why not? Uh, so that's there. So now if I go back and I install Stall. this again, this yeah. is a, uh, our, our fork of the Ceph Ansible playbooks is a dependency of this. So it'll get that. Yeah, yeah. there it there is. Yeah, there we go. 45D Ceph deploy or 45D Ceph Ansible. Okay. Sweet. So, uh, I mean, I think we're ready. Let's just dive yeah, into it. Yeah, I think it. password of SSH is already set up. Dark mode or light mode? Uh, light mode for this environment, I think. Okay, I like it. Yep. All right, so. <laughs> that doesn't affect the cluster's yeah. function. No, Just it in case anyone was curious. <laughs> uh, all right, so please ensure that the following network steps are completed before proceeding. So each host should be able to ping each other host using a host name. Yep. Um, I. How about your do terminal? We have, do we set that up already? Yeah, I, well, because I think these root were already. Yeah, yeah, uh, I was already using. Let's just make sure, though. Like, yeah. uh, let me ping, ping, my, ping my neighbor here. Seth Rocky two. Yep. Okay, that's good. Three. And three. Uh, let's just let's just test the back ends because I didn't. We never actually True did enough, that. We haven't didn't. done that. So two. Two. Yep. That's a great sign. Three. three. Beautiful. Okay. So the back end, that ten network is our forty gig, and the one nine two one six eight is on our ten gig here. Yeah. Nice it's big switches. Remember, we're an expanding company. So <laughs> yep. Exactly. This is our big production setup. So we're gonna have lots more nodes yeah. eventually. So any bonds that are required have already been configured and tested. We're not using bonds, but we did just configure and test our network interfaces, so that's yep. good. And SSH keys have been generated on the admin node and passwordless SSH to all hosts is working. Yep. Um, 
We did change the interfaces around though, so let me sure just enough. double check that that's still. Yeah, and while you do that, just explaining why we do this. So because um, Ceph Deploy is using Ceph Ansible underneath, uh, a core part of Ansible working uh, requires passwordless SSH to be enabled from the master node to all the nodes you're gonna be deploying services on. So it looks like we're good to go there. Yep. So we're ready to pass pre-configuration. Okay, it's so done. Ooh, big green. Yeah. If anyone hasn't checked this out and you guys are interested in Ceph Deploy, go watch the dedicated video we put on Ceph Deploy. Mark put a lot of effort into yeah, it. Yeah, really it, cool It's kind of like a whole thing about how, I don't know, it's like a little merit. Anyway, I won't give it away. Check we it haven't out. been it's sued funny. by Nintendo yet. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> 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 All right, so let's configure Ansible now. So no hosts have been configured. Click the plus new host to add a new host. So we'll do that. So Sev Rocky Uno. Yep, starting with himself. He, he's Spanish, I guess. Is, is Uno Spanish? I don't yes. know. That was kind of awkward. <laughs> yes. I could tell by Mitch's yes there. He was like, Brett, stop it. <laughs> Putting a show on, by. Leave it alone. Rocky three. There we go. There you go. Okay. So those are our three hosts. All right. So now we got to decide what host is doing what. Okay. So we got our Ceph Mons on all three. Yep. We got our managers. We put them the on same. all three. Yep. Yeah. OSDs. Same oh, yeah. thing. <laughs> Metrics, let's just pick the first one. Okay. Yep. MBSs? Uh, well, I don't think we're doing 7FS right now, so we don't really need that. We don't need SMB, so NFS, there's, or So there's no stuff. RBD role? No, there is not. No, because that's kind of the beautiful part of the block device. You don't need any extra service. Yeah, exactly. You just got to create that pool and start using it. Yeah, and then with the Windows driver, we'll be able to just slap it right in there yeah. and then go. You can even create the RBD from the Windows side if you really wanted to. <laughs> so it's really nice. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Going too fast. This is the advanced class, Brett. Catch up, come on. <laughs> Jeez, man, wrong video, <laughs> leave me alone. All right, cool. Uh, all right, so let's go through the additional options here. So yep. there's not too much here, but we'll go through. Nope. So offline install, we're not doing an offline install. The point of this is some people who uh, need to build a Ceph cluster want to put it in an air gap environment. Yep. Um, security reasons, whatever reasons, maybe they don't want to pay their internet traffic. I don't, exactly. I don't know, yeah. I can think of anything. So the point of this is, um, Playbooks are built to handle that as, uh, well, that's out of the scope Without of Without reaching video. out to the internet, yeah. essentially. But we it, have all the packages yeah. internally. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. If that's something that's interesting, you reach out. We can tell you how that all works a little further. Definitely. Okay, so let's get to the key parts. So the monitors, they want to know the monitor interface. Yep. So oh, I forget the monitor interface. Yeah, so the monitor interface in this instance would be the public network. So whatever interface the public network is on, and so we can find that there. Okay. I love Houston for cut and copy reasons. There we go. And again, other UIs sometimes lose it. One of my favorite part of cockpit uh, slash Houston is you can jump from module to module and it remembers where you left off. Yeah. So for uh, people like me who can't remember an IP and interface or even if you've just looked at it, very, very useful. And you can see here, this is a global option. So this is assuming that all monitors are using the same uh, network interface for the for their monitor, yeah. which is the case here. Say we plugged it into a different port and we needed monitor interface to be something else on the third host, you'd have the option to do that. Yep. Anyway, we're not gonna fill these in nope. because we're gonna use the global. IP version, you can use IPv4 or IPv6. But not both. But not both. <laughs> Pick one or the other. We're using IPv4 here. Uh, okay, so options for the OSDs. All right. So the OSD, we need to tell so the public So this is the subnet, network. yep. Slash 16. Our massive. We got a nice big dirty slash 16 here in the lab. So the cluster. Never know when you're going to need thousands upon thousands of IP addresses. <laughs> We're expanding, yes, growing. Exactly. Enormously <laughs> combusting video. Video? <laughs> Jeez, company. Being All right. company. Yep. All right, it's crash that. Cut that, cut that. <laughs> um, uh, hybrid cluster, indeed. No. Oh yeah, true enough. No, we don't want a hybrid. Yeah. Yeah, I blame me for that kind of confusing yeah, thing. A, yeah, yeah. Hybrid cluster is only to be used if you want OSDs. Yeah, SSDs as OSDs. Yeah, SSDs as dedicated OSDs and hard drives as, Got it. as dedicated Makes OSDs. Sense. Where we're gonna use them as dedicated, dedicated device, devices. Dedicated, like journals or block DBs, whatever you want to call it. Yep. So uh, before we dive in, so yeah, I guess we'll do that. And what we'll do here is we're gonna lay out all the devices we want to use as our uh, Journal um, devices journal for device. the OSDs, yep. or journal's kind of the older term, but we're gonna yeah. use it in interchangeably. Um, exactly. One thing here is the block DB size, so how big to make that. Yeah, exactly. So in the past, there's been a rule of 
what it was it 330 and 300 yep and that was a limitation due to rocks db yep. the the uh the um the, way that it the software that so, it yep. packs and yep. all that uh long story short it was like use 330 or 300 gigabytes since octopus oh thank you that was a key point yep <laughs> how fast are you going three speed yes you see that it's a anyway. unit of three yeah <laughs> unit of three um no sorry uh, but since Octopus, yeah. that kind of that rule has gone out the window, and the best kind of um, the best device is just use as much space as you can. Yeah, it's able to make use of more than just those levels now, yeah. which is really nice. So um, minus one is how Ansible Playbooks knows. Yeah, it's yeah. the let it decide. Yeah. It, it's not even let it decide. It's use the biggest you can. Gotcha. Yep. So what yep. it's doing on the hood is using Ceph volume. If anyone's tried to yes, build a cluster yep, yep. using Ceph volume. That's what this thing's using, and yeah. if you use the batch and just throw at all the SSDs and hard drives, it'll just, it'll just auto magically do it all. Yep. Okay, so we're just going to leave that default as fine. Perfect. Okay, so Severaki One, we're going to have to lay out all the devices. Okay. So what we're going to do is give it the alias name. Yep. So, so this is where the disk module comes in handy. Yeah, that's boom, really boom, nice. boom, 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 so and boom. Two one to two six. Okay. There we go. So we'll pick up where we left off. Yep. So we're going to go right. two dash one. Two dash two. Okay, I'm just yeah, gonna that, click them all works. out now. That was that's better. Two dash three. Two dash four. Two dash five. Two dash six. There we go. All right, first well, one. Well, now we just gotta rinse and repeat on that. Yep. Um, I'm not gonna look at the other ones. We've got them in the same we location do. each time. Yep. Uh, two dash two. Yep. Two dash three. Uh, yeah, last one. Last So 2-1, 2-2, 2-3, 2-4. Sorry, I know it's annoying I'm repeating these again, but <laughs> if I don't, I will type it wrong. Yep. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that looks good to me. We, looks good to me. We got our public, we got our cluster, yep. right? 10, 10, 0, 24. Let me double check one more time. Uh, yeah. 10, 10, 0, yep. Back to Seth deploy. I did that backwards. I wanted that one. Whatever. They'll all what communicate it? with each other. I wanted this one to be 10-10-1. Uh, oh, yeah. That doesn't saying. matter, though. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, so that's right. That's right. That's right. We've got six devices, six devices. All right, let's hit update options. So if this one is 10-10-3. Don't, I did it right the first time. Like, let's go okay, low. Yeah. Oh, Mitch is doubting me now. <laughs> one. Make sure. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Two passed? Yes, you passed. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he's happy. All right. <laughs> All right. All right, so now we're on to the next. So we told Ansible everything it's going to need to know about this cluster, or at yep. least for the core of the cluster. Exactly. But the core of the cluster is all we need because our, that's all RBD needs. Exactly. Slick. Okay, so let's hit generate to uh, create our host inventory file. So this is really cool if anyone's used Ansible before. Um, you essentially have to go in, and there's a lot of variables you're going to set in the, in the Ansible files in the group files. Uh, or your host file that you have to set up. Ceph Deploy is going to take all the information that you input and it's going to generate all those files for you, which is really, really nifty. Yep, so we'll, uh, we'll just hide that. And then, so, like you said, there's the host. So that's, that was our roles mapped out. Yep. Gotcha, so you can double check that again if you want it. And then now okay. we're going to generate the, uh, the, the all. All so that, like, yeah. yep. So this is done. We won't go through nah. all of it because that's kind of the beauty of Ceph Deploy. Exactly. It just handles it for you. Yep. You already saw the important information. Okay, so we'll hit next. Yep. Okay, now we're gonna click run to test Ansible connectivity to Ansible ping. So this is it's pretty much gonna test that, uh, that page from the prerequisites, that exactly. our host names are resolvable, and that uh, password list SSH exists. Exactly, so anyone that doesn't use Ansible, the ping in Ansible is a little different from like a regular network ping. This is actually attempting a passwordless SSH to each host. And then if it succeeds, then you're good to go. Yeah. So it's so it everyone's like responding. We're ready to rock. Yep. It knows who it is. Usually it's just nice. Python three. I don't really care. All right. So it's done. Okay. So Ansible configuration is complete. Gives me another check mark. So let's do Ceph Core. Yes, sir. Okay. Next. So click Run to run the device alias playbook. Yeah. You might have noticed we took all that time to put in the. Um, uh, the Rocks DB, the Rocks DB, but we didn't actually tell it which device, which like which drives to use. Exactly. Because again, the playbooks kind of automatic, automatically figure that out for you. 
That's my new word today, <laughs> automatically. So, as you can see, it's ripping through. Get the repo script. Yep. Set pre-run. Very boring. It takes a while, but it's necessary. Yeah, the, the root package takes a while, eh? Yeah. All right. Okay, so, so that worked. I got no, I got got no issues there. So uh, uh, let's see what it what what does it generate when you do that? It generates this file. Cool. If you really want to get into it, and what this file tells you is uh, no, it it does this file and then it grabs these devices. So it's, so we don't actually have to refer to the disks by their SD names or by their very gross long yeah exactly um, by path names. Yep. Because the point is, is like anyone who's worked with Linux and have used the SD name, so SDA, SDB, yep. those are unreliable. Those Very much will so. change. Yep. If you take a drive out and plug it back in, it will not get its old name. It'll get a new one. Exactly. So when you're building something like a Ceph cluster or something kind of permanent, you need to know where those disks are. Yep. Using the SD names aren't going to work. It's not reliable. So yeah. the, the correct way to do it is to use the bypath by name. Path, but because, because it's guaranteed you know exactly which slot it'll be yeah, plugged into. Yeah, that's right. And it's never going to change. However, that's no fun to type no, out No, that's hand. not at all. <laughs> so we use a set of UDEV rules to map that out to an alias. That's why you Very saw cool. earlier we can use the, like slash devs. Dude, uh, like yeah. if I look, these are all our yep. aliases here. Yeah, Actually, which shows me we're going to have to run a good... Uh, yep. We're going to purge this before we gonna run We've got some partitions going to purge, yep. I'm going to do that right now, actually. This is kind of... Inside baseball. Yeah. Uh, oh, not WebFS, sorry. I want to do wipe. Oh, you want to do wipe dev? 45 tools, wipe dev yeah. dash A. Oh, we got a couple of errors there. Device resource busy. Two oh, five, this is two to good. We're, we're going off road now. There we go. No, no MD stats. BGs. Very possible. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, old Ceph disks. Yep. All right, so we can. Okay, that's no big deal. We can wait. PG remove those. Yeah, so we're gonna go for I in. Oh, we got the fancy loops coming PG. in. PG. Leave me alone, man. PGS, grep, SEF, AUK, trans one, curly, close that. Uh, I opened a curly and never had <laughs> another one. There you go. Yep. Print one, that looks good. Let me just test my. Yep. Echo, I. Uh, uh, we're missing a, yep. There close you your brackets, bruh. Put a do. Yep. There you okay, go. Okay, that looks good. So, so now, now we're gonna do go. Do VG remove. Yeah, how much time <laughs> did I really save there? A lot. <laughs> yeah, a couple, yeah, it's fancy anyway. There we well, go. It's just the rules of automation and scripting. It's yep. like if you didn't maybe spend more time, anyway, The first up. time just maybe, keep you got yeah. that uh, Anyway, so we won't do this again. Um, Cool. I'll copy that because I'll have to do it on the on other, other node. nodes. Yep. I'm going to wipe dev again just to. Yeah, everyone there looks we happy. Go. We're there. good now. LS dev. Okay, they're all there. Yep. I'm going to hop open to here because probably the same thing. Same again. thing. PVS, cat, Etsy. Let me just make sure there's. Um, okay, yep. we're good there. So paste that in. There we go. Wipe dev. Wipe dev dash A. Does that also get copied to the binaries? So, like, can you use it as a no, as a command? No. No, no. We kind of did that on purpose. Okay. Oh yeah. I scared. like to not make it easy to wipe. To wipe stuff, yeah. <laughs> actually, fair enough. Actually, I used to link it back. I'm yeah. pretty sure it was Linus when I showed him. Was like, can you delete that file, please? Ah, true. And I was like, no, 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 it's fine. He goes, no, please delete the file. <laughs> I was like, okay. That's awesome. He knows himself well. Yeah. Uh, I, and, and sorry, Linus, if I'm slandering you and it wasn't you who did that, but I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, you don't care anyway. I hope. There we go. Ooh, we had lots on this one. Okay, so typically when you build a cluster, if you're like getting something fresh, you got those drives fresh out of the factory, you rip that seal, yep. there's nothing on it. You'll never have to do this. Yeah. But, uh, you know. We, this is we, the dev environment, so. The dev environment. I love it. You just go, it's the dev environment. Yeah. And you can it's wrap just a away right off for bad everything. choice. Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> We're not winning yet. Okay. All right. Back back to back to the nice graphical inter oh I forgot, yeah, and you get a full working terminal. Awesome. Yep. Okay, so device alias is there. And the other 
thing that device alias did. I just want to show you because you asked the question, yeah, I never answered first. it. Yep. What that actually did. Yep. Um, share. Uh, sorry, host virus. <laughs> Uh, host virus. Okay, so notice there's a file for each server. Yep. So that means anything in these variables or uh, any of these files will be applied to that server. So these will overtake anything that's in the group virus. You got it. Okay. So this is useful for stuff like um, disks. Yep. So what that device alias did in conjunction with us giving it the DB, the, uh, yep. the DB run out, it defines what devices we want to build. Got it. And you can see how it correctly grabs. One through to fifteen. Yep. And then two seven through to fifteen, and it sets one off. to six for our and then dedicated Ceph devices. Set volume's just going to do everything else. Nice. Anyway, so that's why we don't really have to. That's why we don't specify which disks go in it. It'll just grab everything it knows it needs to use. Makes sense to me. Okay. That's why we had to wipe it too, because it would have ran. So we got to make the OSDs, then it would fail on us, and we would have to rinse and repeat. Yeah, Not yeah, at the end of the world. Just spend a little extra time, right? Yep. Okay. So I'm not going to hit run again. No, nope, because done. we already did it. Yep. It wouldn't. You wouldn't cause any damage if no, you did, though. Just redo it. Um, right. So now we click run to perform the core YAML playbook. So the core is going to deploy the monitor service. Yep. The manager service. Yep. The OSDs. Metrics. No. No, that's dashboard. A dashboard. Yep. You know what? Are we going to make? Uh, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. We'll figure that out. I don't know if we even need the dashboard for this, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll you know decide. What? We'll figure it out on the fly. <laughs> we'll do it live. There you go. Okay. All right, so this finished. We Put got ourselves through. a cluster. Okay. So we got our classic health warning that comes to all octopus clusters now. Yep. So we're just going to ignore that for now. Yeah. Uh, typically, we turn that off, but yeah. actually, you know what? If it's in my history, no, it, it is not. No biggie. Hold on. I've ran this commit. No, it's just deleting pools. Yeah. That's fine. Actually, you know what? Let's set this in case we have to delete a pool. It's in the uh, knowledge base that you actually have up already. Perfect. Yep. So we have our oh, internal. Oh, we're going to have to leave it off, though. True. Yeah. Let's just leave it. Which is, yeah, I think that's what that, it just uh, quiets it and stops it from yelling at you. Okay, well, we'll talk about it when yeah, we get Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Sounds good. Okay, so like we said, uh, we got a Seth cluster. So let's hit done. We're done out of here. Yep. Um, dashboard's unlocked. We could run the dashboard, but we don't really need the dashboard right now. Nope. Um, we're going to make the RBD when we get into Windows. Yep. Yeah? Okay, cool. So, uh, we'll go to a terminal. So, typically, you could make it, make the Ceph pull through the dashboard. Yep. But let's just do it by hand here. Yep. Definitely. So, we only need one pool here. Uh, actually, you know what? We're going to use two. We're going to use the RBD replication pool. And then we're going to use the 4 plus 2 RBD pool. Okay, cool. So I did this wrong on purpose because I want to read the uh, so PG. Uh, let me make sure auto scale is. You know what? Why don't we just do the dashboard so we can just get everything nice and easy? All right. Yeah, why not? All right, fine. I've twisted my arm. <laughs> okay, so like again, we're back in Ceph deploy. Yep. Uh, we're just going to hit dashboard and we're going to hit run. Yes, sir. And we'll, this will take just a minute. Yep. Um, while this is running, is there anything we can do on the Veeam side? Um, well, yeah, definitely. We can get the Ceph driver installed at least. All right, let's All do right. that. So let's you drive that. and get that started while the dashboard's up. Okay. When the dashboard comes up, we'll finish making the pool. All right, so I'm going to pop over onto our terminal here. A nice little curl command. So you're so installing the Windows driver because we're going to make this RBD device. A, we're going to make it on the Windows machine, and then we're going to map it here. Exactly. So we're going directly from this big old guy yep. right into that. Pretty much exactly right. Yep. So let's trace it. So we. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Keep so going. So we've got the Ceph uh, Windows driver, uh, which we we kind of gave a shout out in the early portion, but it's cloud base uh, that put this together. So we can see. I'm just using a, cr a curl in Windows, which is essentially just downloading it, and then we'll install it here through the terminal. So let's pull that down. Uh, it'll probably take a minute or so, depending on how our internet is feeling right now. It will literally take a minute. Yep. So while the dashboard goes, we'll see what finishes yeah, so first. We were, yeah, <laughs> trying, to, trying to save time here. Trying we're going to gonna fill time. time with some jokes or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Buddy, we are the joke. Yeah. No. Um, I love countdowns. All right. And you just got to fill time with it. Um, so good, though. We also got our, met our metrics uh, deployed with the dashboard as well. So if we want to get a look at our Grafana graphs while the Veeam backups are going. We have that available to us now. So, all right, there we go. So we got our uh, 
driver. Ceph driver installed here. So let's just download that now, or let's install that right now. So this Ceph driver, like, it's not CephFS. No. Nope. It's literally just like you can speak Ceph CLI and you can mount Windows driver. Well, look, so yeah, it's it actually right does have a portion for Sir Ceph token, which is it gives you the ability to mount CephFS as well. But it's nowhere near as production ready as as the RBD. And driver. honestly, man, like if you're gonna put this storage into Windows and use it kind of in production, uh, here I'll gladly you. let you do that. Okay. Oh, great. Camera's on and I'm panicking. Um, Bam, look at that. All right, so the one thing what to note. What were saying, yeah? Yeah, what, what were we talking Seth about? Doken, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Seth Doken. No, um, Seth, Mountain Seth FS natively in Windows is cool too because you can skip the gateway and stuff. Yep. But, like, if you're really going to put file systems into Windows and use it with all your clients and stuff, you're probably going to want Windows ACLs. You're probably yeah. going to want... So you're going to want to use Samba. So at that point, you're going to have to use the gateway anyway. So um, anyway, I'm have, very excited to see where the kind of native CFFS comes with Windows. But Samba's pretty good. Don't have permission. We're going to do this a million times. Yep. We probably should have uh, prepped for this. Um, well, we did, <laughs> except that our computer crapped the bed. So we switched yeah, to this one enough. instead. And uh, I don't have the same kind of workaround. So uh, on the subject of a use case that I would see for CFFS, um, let's say you've got a Windows server and you want to share out your Ceph cluster to your Windows clients with SMB, but you don't want to do it through Linux Samba, I think that would be a cool way, right? You could mount CephFS on the Windows server and then Windows could then create the SMB shares and start exporting them from, from uh, Windows. Yeah. So you got some cool stuff you can do with that. All right, so you got your comp file, you're, you're stealing from me here. <laughs> well, you were in the middle of a great piece there. I just, just wanted to help. No, no, you got it. You're doing the just exact right thing. Help. We're going to remove that text. Oh, Where is rename? You, you just, there you go. You weren't actually on it. There you go. Oh, I swear we're not using <laughs> computers. There we go. All right. Cool. See you, Mark. So I'm going to steal WinSCP while we're here because I'm going to grab the key ring. Uh, so let's disconnect from your machine. And let's go. 192.16. Yeah, okay. 123.121. All right, so let's pop into the Ceph directory. Just pop in there, eh? Oh, Say hello. No, I'm in root Ceph, which I didn't know existed. Uh, all right, oh, let's buddy, go. <laughs> it's the dev box, man. Uh, There's yeah. everything on all here. All right, so we got Etsy Ceph here. And See, what I, you just double click on. it. Yeah. See, you can't do it either. <laughs> all right, so what I'm looking to get here is the ceph.client.admin.keyring. Let's pop her in here. For, I mean, uh, real life use case, you may not want to put the admin key ring on your uh, Windows machine because this gives you like full functionality for the cluster. You'd probably want to make a custom key ring that has only RBD permissions. Uh, but this makes sense for what we're doing Good here for a for test. Us, buddy. So we're just going to call this key ring because that's what our CephConf is going to expect so it to be called. just key ring, no, so, no you, extension, no, no nothing. No extension, no nothing, mm -hmm. yep. Um, Windows says we're not going to be able to use it. Uh, our Ceph driver will make use. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm just kidding. So I'm going to open up. You mean Windows isn't like, I don't know. I was just making jokes. I'm going to just move on. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to move on. open up our, our internal knowledge base here, which has a nice guide for setting up RBD on Windows. The reason why I'm doing that is because the Ceph comp in Windows is a, a lot different than what you'd expect in Linux. Well, not a lot different. It's it just has different. that you yeah. can't copy it over. Exactly. You so, wanted to show off the nice article you wrote, too. Yeah, you? exactly. Uh, I always, always want to brag <laughs> any, anytime I can. Um, all right. SCP. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Right yeah, there, there we go. go. You're right. too busy showing off. What? So there we go. So for essentially what this saying is, we're going to log a standard error true. Um, run directory is in program data set out. Crash directory, same. Um, and this is where it's going to look for oh, the key ring right here. Program data set key ring. All right, so for this part though, we're gonna have to switch this out and get it to match. Is uh, it an exact, like exact match for Monhost? You know what? I think it is, but let's make Ooh. sure. No, here. Okay, go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you, you know better than I. Yeah, maybe, maybe my uh, guide isn't so end all be all. So what I'm gonna get here, is configuration area. We got the sample. Oh, here. go to the sample, yeah. Yeah, so it just says 
Okay, on so, so you just pop it in the exact, exact same way. Yep. So yeah, go to the win SCP so and just copy yeah, it out of. Or uh, let's uh, cat Etsy, Seth. Multiple ways to skin a cat. Yes, actually. you got her. All right. Come on, host. Let's just copy the whole we'll thing. Just take the whole thing. Here. Boom. Now let's pop open this and replace the whole thing. There we go. Okay, it looks good. It's looks good to me. All right, so we right, may well, need a reboot for this to work, but we'll check. Let's just command, see if we exactly. can do it. Exactly. Oh, actually, you know what? You, you have to have admin, admin privileges. And I'll need you again. Oh, we got to do this. <laughs> All, right. All right. Let's try this one more time. Yeah. Uh, oh, we don't have a pool yet. Oh, we didn't make our pools. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're good. Okay. We may need to reboot, but we'll, we'll, we'll check after we create our pool. So I'll let you go now and create the pool. Okay, so we finished here, right? We've got our dashboard, so let's go. Oh, perfect. We'll do this off in the dashboard. Yeah, this isn't going to resolve, I don't think, because yeah, no, no, this is not. not on the we DNS. we got to put the IP in. No big deal. 192, 168, 123, 121. Oh, uh, no, sure. No, why no. Not? <laughs> it, it's redirecting to yep. the second host because that's the whole point. Whoever's the active ah, manager yes, yes. 122, hosts then. the dashboard. But it also redirects, and I never set up. Yep. Uh, blah blah there blah. Anyway, here we are. So just the default login password that's set in the. Okay. Admin. So we still have our health warning, but we'll take care of that shortly. We'll talk about that. Yep. Yeah. But this is this is the Seth landing page. I'm sure you guys have seen this before. So yep. We'll hop into pools because remember we're here to make an RBD pool. So let's hit create. And so gonna, why don't you tell them why we're going to make two pools, Mitch? Well. When you're doing uh, RBD and you're doing erasure coding pools, you still want a replicated pool for essentially the parent pool. So there's going to be some metadata that is still going to reside in the RBD uh, three rep pool, but no actual, like no amount of data that's going to be consequential at all. Just a little bit of metadata that is required. So yeah, just something simple, right? RBD, Very simple. replicated, yep. turn off auto scaling. Yep. Don't need much placement groups because it's not actually going to hold any data. That's right. Uh, rep size three. Beautiful. Create the pool. Now the cool thing too here that we'll talk about, when we go to create our four plus two erasure code profile, you're gonna see that it's not gonna work right away. So Seth is gonna holler at us because we're trying to make a four plus two erasure code profile with the failure remain at the host level. And we only have three of hosts. So it's gonna expect the need for six hosts. Um, so we're gonna have to do some customization to fix that. Yep. We got to so talk EC, to EC overwrites, overrites, we wanna make sure we got that on. Um, yep. So we'll make, so we'll a, make new a new crush new, rule. Yep. So we'll, we'll call, call it EC42. Yep. So. Data chunks 42. Yep. Uh, failure domain host. See, we only have three hosts as it shows. It'll there. let us do it, but you like Mitch but said. But it's exactly. Yeah. Once it goes to create the PGs, it's going to get yeah. upset pretty the, quick. The rest of the defaults are fine, so it'll make our new erasure codes. Yeah. No erasure code profile there. Yep. And we'll hit create pool. All right, so here it comes. So you can see it's attempting, it's doing its best, and these PGs are never going to go healthy. No, and we should see, yeah, yep. like some of them will just stay incomplete. It'll just incomplete, exactly just what forever. it'll do. It'll just sit there because until it, we do something. It cannot satisfy the rule. By default, it wants to put one of the six chunks on an yeah. individual host. We've got three You've hosts. You've got it. So if you went and like checked the PGs, it would pick one from each host, and then the other three would be completely jumbled mess because it doesn't have any others. Yeah. So yeah, see that's done. Yep. Um, Seth health detail. Yep. See, there's those numbers us. we were talking about. And see the magic numbers? Yep. Those are the ones that this OSD satisfy. doesn't exist. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, so let's <laughs> fix that. <laughs> it might help. Nope, it won't help. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's fix it. You yep. want you wanna do it? Uh, it doesn't matter. We can both do it. Okay, yep. here, I'll grab your crush. So what are we going to do? We're going to go... So we're going to pull down our crush your... map. So by default, when you pull down the crush map, it's going to be pulled down in a compiled state. So you can't just read it right away. So you've got to pull it down. So then you've got to decompile it. Get, um, Jesus, what is it? What, it? what are you trying to do? Get crush get map. Get crush That's map, it. yep. Um, and uh, we're just going to give it a compiled. file. Or whatever you want. Uh, is it dash O? Yeah. Compiled. He's just winging her here. Ah, because it's not a separate get. 
There we go. There you Kay. go. Yep. So, uh, don't mind me, guys. <laughs> Compiled into, I just want to put this in a Temp separate. Yeah. Yep. So let's CD in there. All right, so we can't open that yet because, again, it is a compiled crush map. So we're going to so go crush going tool, to, yep. decompile, yep. Compiled. compiled, oh, decompiled. You got it. So now we can open decompiled. Okay. So and this is our crush map. There we go. So please don't change anything in here if you don't know what you're doing um, because you can cause some issues with your cluster. Yep. So we're going to go right to the bottom to uh, our pool that we created there. All right, so see how it says step, choose leaf, in depth, type zero host. Cool, yeah, so this is the, yeah, see, this is the RBD rule. Yeah, because it's not, these aren't the pools we created, it's the rules we've created that we've assigned it to a pool. Exactly. So if a yep. pool has been created with a rule already, yep. we can go screw with the rule and it'll move data around. You got so it. So that's what we're doing here. Yep, you got okay, it. Okay, so I cut you off though. Yep, so right here it's saying essentially min size three because it had to do that. So we want to change that to six. Um, it had to do that because it, it literally had no choice. It had to do a min size of three. But we're going to go min size six, max size six. That's good to go. Um, so step, choose leaf, tries five. It's going to try five different OSDs. Do we We're really want to use six or do we want to use four? I want to let it write. No, because remember, uh, erasure coding is a little different from replication where it will literally, if you have less than the min size, it will still satisfy it. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, we leave set true. Yep. Choose leaf the same. Tries five. Yep. Yeah. So if we lost two of the six, um, erasure code's a little different from replication. Where if you don't have the min size, it's just done. It's not going to read and write. Okay. Uh, so it's choose. Choose. In depth. In depth. Zero type. No, not zero. Uh, sorry. Yeah, it's in the. No, no, no. We're going to get this. <laughs> we'll we'll three. double check ourselves yeah, yeah, after. Yeah, yeah. But yep, yep. So it's three type post. post. Yep. And then it's because we're not choose, doing a, choose in depth. Choose leaf yep. means grab something, and so choose leaf host. You got it. Choose the host, and then just you pick where the OSD is. Exactly. But we need to be specific. So now we're going to do two type OSD. Yep. You got it. All right. Where is it? Is it in? Right, it's, it's in a right, separate knowledge yep, base. You got it right there. It's in here. Yep. Do it. In oh here. no, it's not you in here. Is it? Here. I'm What's crazy. You're, you're not spot. I'm crazy. You're not. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, what is it called? Or maybe we don't even put this in a gut. I don't think we put this in the knowledge base. Up until now, this has been uh, secret sauce. Okay, well, it's not secret anymore. Not secret anymore, guys. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's right, though. Yes, it is. I, it's 100% right. Um, I love the in, confidence. Until I saw it, I, I, I wasn't sure. But once I saw it, I was sure. Okay, I'm removing the compiled because yep, I want that's fine. I just want to make it again. So yep. I'm going to go crush tool, compile, yep. decompile, dash O. Into compiled. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, we're going to go Seth. This is the one I don't so know. So the right thing heart. to do, the right thing to do yeah. is to test your crush map exactly, when you're done. Exactly, yeah. Because what you can do is put it through crush tool test and it'll tell you if it's right or not. Yep. But like I said, dev cluster, we're in the lab, we live fast and loose. Yeah, exactly. And another thing, the best thing to do is the way you just removed compiled, you probably want to keep that original one just in case yeah. you forget what you did or what it originally was set to. Uh, uh, I think I'm doing it wrong. All right, no problem. Is it dash O? I thought it was dash O. No, that's dash, it's probably dash Too I. Too much pride to look at the guide. <laughs> it's probably dash I. All yeah, right, fine, I don't know either. Fine. Uh, we did have it up. Okay, you must have, yeah, gotcha. If you go back, I think it was on there. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. I didn't crush map. All right, so set it. No, it is. Let's see what the error is. End of buffer. Um, uh, we must I'm have saying it's probably it, yeah. has an extra um, yeah. character at the end or something. Okay, so let's get so back. Let's open it up. Let's yep. go back into decompiled. No, that looks fine. That looks fine too. Um, look at what I did here, though. No, that's. Let's just try again. Failure to parse crush map buffer and dump buffer. Uh, it's got to be because it's a. Uh, um, just I broke it. <laughs> so decompile that one's good, and we'll just call it like just calling it new. New. Okay. Okay. And then we're gonna go Seth, Seth OSD, OSD set, set crush map dash i new. 
It's thinking. There we go. Okay. So now if we go back to Somehow our we, did that we go back to right. our pool and we see if those PGs get uh, get created. Active okay, clean. we're doing that. Yep. Sick. Oh, where did you want to go back? Oh, here? I was just gonna say, yeah, because yeah, you could watch nicer. it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Awesome. But that works now because we gave it a rule that can be satisfied. Yep, exactly. And Actually, this is, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say now if you showed those PGs again, we would have two per host. Oh. I don't think we have to go all the way through. Oh, that, you said it. We're doing <laughs> it. Uh, I don't think it'll be there anymore. So you'd have to do Seth PG query, uh, PG query by pool, or something like that. Okay, never yeah. mind. Yeah. We're not doing it anymore. <laughs> You're right. Okay. All right. Uh, but I guess the point is, is as this cluster expands, you could go back into that crush map and oh, yeah. kind of undo the change, Definitely. and then spread it back out and bust across a bunch of hosts. Yep. Anyway, so you got yourself a pool. We do. Uh, do we want to make an RBD just to make Let's sure? Let's try an RBD LS uh, on the Windows? other one. Oh no, yeah. that's in uh, the Ceph it's, That's just in the Ceph yeah. conf. I'm just gonna... That's the Ceph. I don't care, we're gonna ignore that for now. Okay. Dev cluster, right? Yep. <laughs> All right, so let's do an RBD LS now. Uh, oh, oh, you need no, to be it's, in it's, the it's, command prompt. We're not in our yep. elevated one. There you go. Yeah, I believe this is because we need to reboot. You got a reboot? Yep. Got a reboot. All right. We're rebooted? Yep, we're rebooted in. RBD should be working now. RBD Beautiful, LS. no errors. And we can clear too, yep. Windows Terminal. Good. Got to get away from the command prompt. Yep. Okay. That's the real tech tip. That's, <laughs> this whole video is just about to use Windows, just use Windows Terminal. Yep. It's much better. All right, so where are we Sorry. at here? <laughs> okay, we're going to finish this video. Yep. We're going to make <laughs> some RBD it's, images. Yes. Well, one. Just one? Yeah, okay, just one. good. Attach it to Veeam. Yep. Well, and Mount it in the Windows machine with the, with the native Windows driver. All right. All right, so let's do that. Show us the magic. Okay, so we've got our pools created now, if you recall. We've got our three rep RBD, and we've got our four plus two erasure code. So we'll call this Veeam01. Veeam. Veemo. So... <laughs> <laughs> the parent pool, again, is the RBD pool. We're going to use a dedicated data pool, which is the erasure code pool. So we'll pick that, and let's give it... Yeah, what, well, were we, what were we doing not using the dashboard? It's so much easier. It is so much anyway, easier. Anyway, keep going. I'm just going to do one terabyte. It doesn't make sense. Like, you know, obviously, if this was real, oh. we'd go a lot bigger. Oh, yeah, make it one terabyte. We never checked the capacity of the cluster. Remember, that was part of the surprise. Oh, true enough. Let's take a look and see what Seth is telling us on usable space here. One hey, petabyte. We hit a petabyte. Yes. Available, one Raw. pad away. Yeah. Yep, there we Raw. go. Remember, we're only going to get to use 66% of that because we're yeah. using a 4 plus 2, but yep. we've got our pad away. All right, so let's go. Let's create our image now. So Veeam 01, dedicated data pool, erasure code, mm -hmm. and let's go. One T IV. What are you saying now? Just do one T. Do you have to put the. I don't think units? so. Probably not. Yeah, it does it for you. Yeah, okay. All right, so these <laughs> what are. are you, what are you going to say now, man? <laughs> You're always on my back. No. Um, <laughs> so these are cool extra little features if you want to do snapshots. Um, if you want to uh, layer your snapshots, which essentially allows you to clone it, yada, yada, yada. But what? We just want to create Defaults our RBD. Defaults are fine here, here right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So let's create that RBD. You can tell we're a little, like, uh, jaded to storage stuff when we kind of <laughs> forgot the whole point of the video. Was it to look at a petabyte. Yeah. yeah. All right. So now, <laughs> since... Uh, our, our Windows machine here should be talking to the cluster. Oh, he said the magic word, <laughs> should be. We will RBDLS and hopefully that RBD we just made will show up. Okay. Yay. And there it is, <laughs> okay. So now, without the use of any dirty iSCSI, we're gonna use this native Ceph driver say that word. <laughs> and map this into this Windows machine. So RBD map um, Veeam 01 is the image, dash P, and I think it should use the parent image, not yes. the actual. No, it uses the parent one. Right? As so, it causes a little well, confusion, but. Yeah. All right, so there we go. So where does that show up? So, so now, in discs or if we go disk mgmt.msc. Oh, bloody. There we go. So then immediately it popped up for us as disk one. So let's throw a volume on it. Obviously, if this was Veeam, you'd probably want to use uh, REFS. Yes. We're going to use NTFS because this isn't a server, it's just regular Windows 10. Uh, so I'll just oh, call yeah. it Veeam. Go yeah. Windows licensing. Yeah, you got it. All right. We got our 1T RBD map oh, to our I Windows machine. Oh, I feel them too. Oh, they're spinning up, are they? I just feel it. 
All right, so now we got our I'm a drive whisper. Brand, but I just... <laughs> our brand new Veeam server here that's ready to get set up. So we go into our backup infrastructure. Okay, yeah, this up. is Veeam. Sorry. Yep, yep, yep. Well, obviously this is Veeam, Veeam. but I mean like start at, start at the beginning again. Sure. So this is clean slate, brand new Veeam server just set up. So by default, it's going to grab your C drive and set up a default backup repository. We don't want that, obviously, right? Nah. Uh, we don't want our C drive no, to start using backups. Kind of guy, yeah. so, so let's add a new backup repository. So this is where you could set up like direct attached storage, network attached storage, S3 storage, all that fun stuff. For Ooh. this, it's going to look like direct attached because we've mapped the block device to this machine. Ah, uh, gotcha. So direct attach, Microsoft Windows. So that little Linux thing there, that's if we were doing that other method that we talked that about, the, the proxy. SSH proxy, you got Sick. it, yep. Okay. So let's call this RBD, oh, or so it still thinks the proxy is local. Yeah, it, it, for but some it, well, it calls it a local. Well, I guess it over. Huh. Yep. Uh -huh. Yeah, it doesn't consider it network attached, like it I'm does cool with, with SMB. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you really use SMB shares with this? Yeah, you can. Okay. You can actually use the fast clone with SMB as well, if it's an RBD, or sorry, if it's a Windows SMB share. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, no Samba, cool. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. So this let's populate this bad boy. So we're looking at our own server, ourself. And there we go, we got our E drive e. that we just set up. So let's add that in. Sorry, we've been shooting for a while. Uh, we've been shooting for quite a while. Yeah, we're going a little stir crazy. Uh, all right, so we can limit the maximum concurrent tasks to four if we wanted to. I don't think we have to do that. We've got a nice high performance Ceph cluster here. Open the gates. Yep, yeah, open the floodgates. Uh, there's some other things you can do in here as well, right? But uh, we're going to keep things standard today. If you want to see a advanced Veeam video, I think I've done one with some cool stuff, but I'll do some more if anyone's interested. I want to see one. Um, yeah. So let's let's just keep going here. So this is cool. This is to give you a mount server. So let's say you ever wanted to, if you're backing up uh, your ESXi VMs and your your actual production storage crashed and you wanted to spin up a VM very, very quickly from backups, well, you can spin up an NFS server on the Veeam server itself to get that storage, these backups, spun up very, very quickly to get your VM running again until you can get your storage worked, fixed up, and, and what have you. So it just gives you the ability to really quickly spin up your backups um, in the event of a so really it's bad like disaster. So useful if you got a single server or something. Something like a cluster like this, we don't care about it as much because it's well, less I think, likely. No, we're talking production storage. Like if their production storage was to fail, um, this allows us to spin up an NFS server on the Veeam server to now act as the production storage. So you can take uh, your backups and uh, use them uh, as the live uh, VM. Uh, okay. Yeah, which is a pretty cool idea, right? Uh, so let's do that. We'll enable that by default. And let's create our repository. Nice. They make that easy. Yeah, it makes it very, very easy. Okay, so back our repository was added successfully. So let's uh, finish that. Finish that repo, and so now we want to ch change it to our newly created. This yes. makes sense, right? Yeah. Our default CLA one is going to be default. our new new Ceph repo. So now from here, you can do some really cool things with Ceph as well, right? We have our scale out repository. If we wanted to enable RGW and some S3 storage, uh, we could do this okay. here. Okay, so it goes like this. It backs up to like what we just did. Like say you could back it up to the same Ceph cluster. Yep. You would do both. So we would do this RBD way, yep. it would back there, and then it would eventually just kind of like offload it off that. Trickle off, the exactly, yeah. Gotcha. And, and what's cool is that is you can turn on that write once uh, read many policy. Ah, uh, worm. Yeah, and it's essentially a mutable object storage, so cool. saves you from ransomware. Sounds like a good idea for another video. Yeah, definitely. So now that we've got our backup uh, repository in place, let's uh, try to kick up a backup. So let's add a server here that we want to back up. Uh, do you have a server up? Yeah, I do have one. I should be able to manually edit one here. I okay. think somewhere. Uh, it's, it's been a while. That it's been a while. Thing? Yeah, but that was for vSphere and for Hyper-V. Oh, okay. I'm trying to grab an actual, oh, here we go, Linux computer. Oh, so you're just going to back up. Uh, I'm going to back up a, an actual bare metal server. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go next. Backup server. Ancient backup job. Okay, let's go fine. high priority because we want to get this kicked off. So let's add a server here. Individual computer. Oh, and then the IP. One two one six eight one nine nine. So back up the back up the backup. Yeah, it does it over SSH, which is nice. So let's go our account. There we go. This is slick. I've never used this part of Veeam before. All right, so there we go. We got our server. Let's back up the entire server here for the first run. Okay. All right, so we got uh, retention policy seven days. Sure, sounds good for now. So 
Yeah, okay, yep, keep going. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, again, we got some cool advanced stuff if we want to do synthetic backups. Remember, we talked about that in the, in the uh, yeah. whiteboard, um, which if we were using our EFS, but, it'd be great yeah, to turn that on. Yeah, we can't do that right now because right. we put NTFS on this, not our. So, I mean, we can use synthetic backups, but they're just much more I.O. intensive. It's going to take a lot longer for them uh, to, yeah, to yeah, do yeah, it, right? Yeah, so. It's going to combine all those images together into one. Yeah. Um, right. All right, so let's just continue on. Uh, so again, like the text repairs app for consistent backup, yada, yada, yada. More things we could turn on if we wanted to. So we can run this job automatically at a certain time, sure. But uh, what we're also going to do before we finish, there should be a way to start right away. Um, it's probably like a run now or run, something. Yeah, like I think made. at the very end there might be. Let's see here. Yeah, run this job when I click finish. Okay, All cool. right, so there we go. So we're going to start backing up to this RBD right about now. I said no, no. All right, uh, there we go. I think it's go. I think it's happening here. Oh, there we go. One running. So let's pop it open here and see what it's doing. I want to get to the point where it's actually going to start doing the real backup. Uh, go to the cluster for a second. The Ceph cluster? Yeah. Sure. Just go to the main page. See if we got any I/O yet. It's reading something, right? Yep. In a little bit right now. But if, like, my guess is, like, bytes aren't hot. Yeah, see, just a little bit of yeah. um, what I'd want to look at. So Veeam has a really cool uh, I.O. indicator once it gets going. Yeah. So we'll, we'll definitely see that as well. And then we'll contrast it against the, uh, against the actual Ceph cluster, which could be cool. Right, but that's pretty much it now, but isn't it? Pretty, pretty close. We'll just, we're going to wait yeah, for that to kick gonna, off. Yeah, so let's All right, cool. pause here. Um, this should process, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I want, I'm dying to see if it'll, okay, it's installing Veeam on it. That's what's going on. So it's still working with the, uh, it's, yeah. It's so it's installing the Veeam, yeah, exactly, the Veeam, uh, I forget the name of the tool. On okay. the uh, on the Ubuntu server, so it can efficiently back that server up. Efficiently. Cool. Yeah. All right. So it's it's like, the, the hang up here is not the ingest into the cluster. That's why we're not seeing any throughput. Yeah, we're not it's seeing It's literally talking to the server that you just said back up. It's installing its tools. Yep. And once that's done, then it'll start sending then it Then it'll over. start actually, exactly, sending all that data. Once we get the Veeam up and running on the, uh, on the client. Oh yeah, good dev package there. Yes. That's slick, man. It is it slick. Goes in and yeah, you don't that. have to like actually manually go and set anything up. Well, I completely understand you. why everyone loves Veeam. Yeah. All right, agent for Linux is installed. Okay, so now if we close, should be, let's pop her open again. I'm still working. Oh, it's performing rescan. Oh, and statistics up here. To, oh, here we go. She's, she's getting ready. It probably did the scan, saw that it needed to do something, yep. and then, yep, success. Job finished, here we go. There we go, baby. Agent back up. Uh, okay, what's next? I'm excited. God, you're excited. <laughs> Are we using the, the default backup? No, I don't think so. Let's see. Default backup repository. <laughs> well, no wonder we're not getting any throughput. All right. Okay, we had a couple little technical difficulties uh, backing up to the wrong repo, trying to click through too quickly. Then but, I tried to add a VM as a physical computer. And that didn't work. So we are good now, however. Let's, let's take a look in here. So we've got a backup job running on one of my machines in the lab there. We can see that uh, we've got it processing here and also we can see on the Ceph cluster, it's also starting to kick up here as well. Um, so the, the backup is starting. So it's, it's going quite slow at the moment, but who knows what it's doing. Uh, there we go. So it's, we also have quite a network path oh here, yeah. right? So the Veeam server is, is gonna be limited by one gigabit. Uh, we just didn't have a 10 gig NIC in there. This is not performance. This was mm -hmm. more uh, proof here's of everything, proof of concept. Yeah. When you build a nice big cluster like this with 40 and 10 gig, don't connect all your front end servers via one gig. <laughs> you will waste your pipe. But exactly. proves the point for today. All right, so it looks like it's going 512, processing rate at 184 megabytes a second. So it's reading the data. So we're getting what we expect. Uh, let's take a look here on the ethernet. It's, it's not writing nope, to it's, the C disk. No, nope, so it's that's not. That's good. So we do have some I.O. here. So yeah. 
So it's functioning. Uh, yeah, we sit it. and we. That's the point of being. Like you just yep. set it and forget it. Yep. And you wait for that uh, VM to or that machine to back up. Yep. So I think uh, I don't know what part. I think it's in the middle of processing right now. So it's not actually physically backing up yet, but it will get there eventually. Yep. So uh, that's it. We built a scale out Ceph cluster. Yep. We started small. We can elastically go big. Yep. Uh, we've hooked into Veeam. You got it. We got it wrong twice, but then we figured it out. <laughs> yep. And now it's automatic though, so it'll just run for us, right? Yep, exactly. Uh, so yeah. I, th I consider this a success. Yep, pretty good. All right, well. I feel uh, good about it. That's a cluster. Yep. That's a Veeam backup. Wait, I got one thing else I want to try. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to pull. No, I'm just kidding. Let's do it. You want to kill a server? Yeah, let's kill a server. What do we want to do? We just want to take one down? Uh, yeah, let's, let's pick the middle one. Did you shut it down? Yep. Oh, no. Yep, it's down all right. All right, let's see if she keeps going. I mean, so far, so good. So far, so good. You Was that the one that was the active dashboard by any chance? Uh, yep, probably. <laughs> it probably was. It'll fail over. Yep, it will fail over, but we'll have to figure out which one it was on. So let's... Uh, let's Pop open the terminal. Oh no! Looks like we're no, good. No, okay. Our 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 erasures. No, no. Our no. PGs are doing exactly what we no, expected them to do. No, this is F two. Yeah. They're not in order. Yeah. This is one. This is two. This is three. So, so I killed three. Yeah. We're seeing everything happen that we expect. So we got one of our monitors down. We got twenty four of our OSDs down. Uh, we have reduced uh, PGs available, but I think the cluster's are still up here. No we're one's still, yelling at us. No yet. one's yelling. Yep. Let's pop over to the Veeam side. Looks like, yep, it's still going. All right, well, here's here's a real test. Yeah, let's hop up on. Uh, there it is. We can get into everything. That's the RBD back. Oh, yeah, that's the RBD. Yeah, true enough. Um, there it is. Yep. Oh, look, you even got yeah, some, some rights the happening there. Cool. All right. Now, well, it, now it's a success. Now it's a success, and we shall fail the cluster node. Yep. Awesome. Cool. All right, well, I'm turning it back on. All right. Yeah, I want to get this back up to succeed anyway. Okay, but the nice part <laughs> is we can just leave it. We're yep. done. Yeah, we're good. All right, guys. Is there anything else you want to try? Um, no. All aside right, from guys. shooting it. No. No, uh, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> uh, so that's it. Yep. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know we did. Um, I don't really have much to say, Mitch. You yep. want to say goodbye? Yep. See you later, guys. Enjoy.